All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning to everyone tuning in. I am Hormes Fatakia, here to tell you all that you need to know on the 16th of March. First up, the government of Maharashtra has notified new rules in view of the rising COVID-19 cases. The attendance for weddings has been curbed at 50 people, while no more than 20 people will be allowed to be present for the purpose of last rites. No social, cultural, political and religious gatherings will take place. Shopping malls have also been asked to follow strict protocols. More details on these guidelines can be found on our website, BloombergQuint.com. Maharashtra reported a total of 15,000 cases on Monday, with Mumbai reporting 1,700 new cases. The draft e-commerce policy states that conformity assessment procedures will be put in place to verify whether the goods and services sold on e-commerce platforms meet the required standards and technical regulations. The procedures are related to testing, verification and certification of goods and services. The draft also said that the government will provide support to aid computerization, digital payment enablement and onboarding of offline sellers onto online platforms. Oil Minister Dharmendra Pradhan said that the government is not considering any proposal to bifurcate state-run Gale. Pradhan said that the company is focused on building pipelines to connect gas sources to consumers in order to accelerate gas usage. To resolve the conflict of a transporter also being the marketer, it was proposed to hive off Gale's pipeline business into a separate entity. However, the minister said that the proposal has been dropped as of now. India's trade deficit widened to $12.6 billion in February as compared to $10.1 billion during the same period last year. Exports for the month were flat, registering a growth of 0.7%, while imports grew 7% during the month, according to official data. Now, as I mentioned to you yesterday, there are plenty of updates from the IPO space. So let me first begin with the IPOs that are open for subscription. First up, Anupam Rasayan's issue was subscribed 3.6 times on the second day of bidding. The retail portion was subscribed over 6.5 times, while the non-institutional portion too was fully subscribed. The IPO of Lakshmi Organics was fully subscribed on the first day itself. Overall subscriptions stood at 2.3 times, which was led by retail investors who put up demand for 4.4 times the shares on offer. However, the Craftsman Automation IPO received a tepid response on the first day of bidding. The issue saw overall subscription of only 51%, with the retail portion being the only one that saw full subscription. Today, the IPO of Kalyan Jewellers will be opening for subscription. The 800 crore issue will see the second largest pan-India jeweller sell shares at 86 to 87 rupees each. At the higher end of the price band, the jeweller is valued at close to 9,000 crore rupees. The company has raised 350 crore rupees through anchor investors like the government of Singapore, Sundaram Mutual Fund, among others, ahead of its IPO. In corporate news, Adani Ports has received the letter of intent from the Ministry of Ports and Shipping in Sri Lanka for the development and operations of the West Container Terminal in Colombo. The terminal will be developed on a BOT basis for a period of 35 years through a public-private partnership. The company said that the port will be developed to reach a capacity of 3.5 million TEUs or 20-foot equivalent units. Tata Communications' offer for sale, where the government will be selling 16% of its total stake, will open for non-retail investors today. The initial plan is to sell 10% of the total equity and a green shoe option to sell a further 6% stake. The floor price of 1,161 rupees per share is a 9.8% discount to Monday's closing price. The OFS will open for retail investors tomorrow. Remember, the government had announced over the weekend that it will be exiting its entire 26% shareholding in Tata Communications. In some international news, the Chinese government wants Alibaba to sell some of its media assets including the South China Morning Post because of growing concerns over its influence on public opinion in the country. Sources told Bloomberg that government officials are particularly upset about the company's influence over social media in China and its role in an online scandal that involved one of its executives. With that, I head over to Neeraj Shah for the trade setup for the day. Morning Neeraj, well we did manage to recover from the day's low on Monday. Does that spark some hope of a bounce post a two-day fall? Well, the bulls would certainly be hoping that that is the case, Hormans. 
but um, I think uh, it promises to be volatile if if nothing else. Now keep in mind the Fed will conclude the latest meeting at about 7 p.m. GMT tomorrow. The markets are pricing in a rate increase by late 2022. So all all eyes will be on the dot plot of rate projections to see if a hike in 2024 is still the central scenario for policymakers. And with trillions in federal spending coming, some officials may bring forward the rate hike forecasts and that could lift the dollar initially though. And therefore, Chairman Powell's address in the press conference might be important because he might push back against such expectations as well. Now that's for tomorrow. For today, we might start off flattish to marginally higher. The reason I spoke about the Fed because uh, that is the overarching move that the global markets will be watching for. And I think our markets will trade on the back of that. Do note that we had a roller coaster move at the start of the week with the index correcting for most part of the day yesterday only to recover in the last couple of hours to recoup some of the intraday losses. Now, since the Nifty's touched the all-time highs about a month ago, we're going through this corrective phase wherein trading has become so difficult. Uh, this, this column by Dr. C. K. and Orion sums it out. Volatility has just been at its peak and traders are getting whipsawed on both sides of the trade. I really doubt that today would be any different and therefore all eyes would be on stock-specific moves. There is probably none more in focus than BP sales simply because of the dividend announcement and therefore that will be a key thing. Will the company give a dividend only to the tune of the treasury stake sale or more or less? And will the markets react to that announcement? So both are very, very important to focus on. Also watch out for banks because as bulls would be itching for some sane levels before the volatility starts hitting the markets tomorrow onwards. Remember, banks were the key pressure points in trade yesterday. There's this wonderful note from Motila Losol which speaks about how electrical goods uh, and white goods might actually see some price hikes or moves around them because of the margin pressures. Uh, they note that the electrical goods like fans and lighting are able to pass on the input cost pressures easily, but the white goods category is not able to do that because of the higher competitive intensity and therefore the next few days would be very, very crucial to figure out if there are price hikes or to a greater level in some of them or not. We already heard murmurs of Voltas doing that. Let's see if some of the others follow suit. And of course, watch out for the commodity stocks, which were very active yesterday and can be the pick of the movers over the next couple of days, impacted no doubt by the movement in the dollar index as well. So all in all, volatility at its peak. Watch out for stock-specific moves. Uh, the oil PSUs and PSUs in general remain in focus in addition to the commodity stocks. Thanks so much for tuning into the podcast. Have a safe day ahead. Please wear your masks. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shila Ditya Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.